as I record, this is, it is August. When I think about August, August is definitely a month of preparation. Uh, if you are an NFL fan, it's NFL preseason. There are NFL um, uh, you know, preseason drills and camps and games going on in the, uh, all throughout the week and the, and the weekends. If you are a child, it means going back to school. It means going back to college. And school means preparation for the life ahead. Someday you're going to get a job and we go to school to prepare us for those days ahead. Everybody knows the value of preparation, even though we may not enjoy the experience of preparation. One of my favorite verses on preparation is uh, Proverbs thirty-one, uh, Proverbs twenty-one, thirty-one. The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but victory belongs to the Lord. Isn't that good? The horse is prepared for the the horse is prepared for the day of battle. The horse needs to be prepared, but ultimately, victory belongs to the Lord. Boy, there's so much demand for humility in that, isn't it? The horse needs to be made ready, but ultimately, God gets the glory. And today I want to, to, us just to think about what it means that we prepare and God gives the victory. Again, everybody knows the need for preparation. Without preparation, you can't win. Um, John Wooden, the winningest coach, I, well, I think the greatest coach of uh, NCAA basketball ever, used to say that um, that his focus, the reason that they won so many national championships, was his focus was preparation. You can't control the game completely, but you can control your preparation. And he would tell guys on the bench, hey, you need to be prepared because success is when preparation meets opportunity. And because you are prepared, you are ready for the opportunity. People, uh, most of us, I think, can appreciate the value of preparation. But nothing is much more frustrating than experiencing the grueling nature of preparation and feeling like you never get the win. You know, nothing much more frustrating than to be a Washington football fan in the years when they are so hopeful in the off season and they prepare and they prepare, they seem to prepare. And then you get into the season and all the preparation seems for not. And I don't know about you, but I get, I get impatient in preparation because the reality is I want to win now. The reality is I'm just probably generally impatient, but I don't like to wait for boil for water to boil. I don't like to wait to watch as for my new grass to grow. I want it to grow instantly. I want my diet to show results every week. I want to show daily progress. I want my devotional life to produce love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and the character of Christ after I've read the Bible twice. I want to see more people discovering salvation in Christ now. I get really impatient by thinking about how much lostness there is in the world around us and how hard it is for us to to, to, to take Jesus into the world and for people to respond. I want disciples who are making disciples every day. I want to see that reproduction. I want to see multiplication now. And I've really discovered recently, part of the reason I'm sharing this devotion with us is God has reminded me, we prepare, but God gives the victory. And in the preparation, we have to learn to be patient I love the old saying that says, God never hurries, but he's never late. God takes his time to prepare us thoroughly for his victories. The Bible's full of examples like this that we ought to find encouraging. Just think about it, Jesus had 30 years of preparation for three and a half years of ministry. Moses, 80 years of preparation for 40 years of leadership. The people of Israel, 450 years of preparation in Egypt, in the promise, in the wilderness. 
before they entered, before they were prepared, before they were ready to go into the promised land. And then there were 2,000 years of preparation of the world before the world was prepared for the Messiah to come in Jesus Christ. God takes his time to prepare. And if you're like I am, and in the season of preparation for something, and you're not seeing fruitfulness, let me encourage you, the horse is made ready for battle, but victory belongs to the Lord. What's it mean for us to keep preparing the horse for battle? What's it mean to be faithful today in preparation? God uses all kinds of things to prepare the horse for battle. He uses trials, pain. That's why the Bible says in James, we consider pure joy when we face trials of many kinds because God uses those things to mature us, make us complete. God uses temptations. Jesus, before he begins his ministry, is tempted three times and overcomes. He uses tutors, mentors, examples, disciple makers. You know, Jesus discipled his 12. The disciples discipled their followers. Their followers discipled the next followers. He uses his word. He uses preaching. All of those things he uses are kind of like drills in boot camp or training in ranger school to get us ready for the challenges ahead. The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but victory belongs to the Lord. So as we prepare, we need to remember what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 3, 6. He says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. Two things. First, what does it mean for us to let God prepare us today? Second, what's it mean to be patient and faithful in that preparation so that we don't give up too soon before his fruitfulness can be made known. Contrast the proverb that we've read today, Proverbs 21, 31, with Ezekiel 38, 7. The prophet of God says, be prepared and get yourself ready, you and your whole assembly that has been mobilized around you. You will be on your guard. Now, that may sound like it's a positive teaching, but the words there of God's prophet in Ezekiel 38 are dripping with sarcasm. They are given by the prophet of God to an ungodly nation preparing to fight against God's people. How much preparation is going to be enough for them to be able to defeat God and his plans and his people? All the preparation in the world isn't going to make them ready to be able to defeat God. So sarcastically, God tells this ungodly nation through his prophet, hey, go prepare yourself. Go get ready. Get organized. Write up your battle plans. Assemble your troops. Train your soldiers. Be on your guard. But it will do no good because no amount of preparation can defeat God's armies. The horse is made ready for battle, but victory belongs to the Lord. So the lesson there for us is to prepare, to let God prepare us to let God prepare us for his work, to cooperate with with him for his victories. Today is the day of preparation. How's God preparing you today? Take a look at the day as you walk through it. Going through a difficult time, God's preparing you. Experiencing temptation, overcome, God's preparing you. Reading his word, memorize his word, 
meditating on his word. God's preparing you. Worshiping him. Are you part of a discipleship group? Are you part of a small group? Are you, are you sharing your faith with somebody else? All of that is preparation. Are you frustrated that you don't see results? Well, then remember, it's just like we're in college or high school again. I remember when I was in college, um, by about the time everybody was a sophomore or junior, it seemed like nobody wanted to be there anymore. Everybody wanted to be finished with the preparation process and on to the ministry, on to the field, on to the real work. And I had a good mentor who gave us wisdom. He said, your job when you're in college is to be a college student. Your job is to fully commit yourself to preparation. There will come a day, and serve, do what God's calling you to do right now in every way, but there will come a day when your job primarily won't be preparation anymore. It will be action. But right now, be content with preparation. Some of us need to hear God say, be patient. You're not seeing the fruitfulness in your group. You're not seeing the fruitfulness in your life that you'd like to see. There's a phrase that we've all been taught, trust the process. Be patient. God has his eye on the clock. His timing is always perfect. The horse is prepared for the day of battle. But victory belongs to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would prepare us with this day for the battles that you have ahead of us. And I pray that this preparation would be uh, that you'd give us patience for your victory. Lord, I want to force it. I want to see the victories today. I want to see the water boil fast. I want to see changes now. I want to see lives changed. I want to see our world changed. I want to see lost people coming to you in droves now. Um, but Lord, I know, I, I confess to you that just as it is foolish to think that the enemies of you can fight against you and win, I can't fight against you in the preparation process and win. So Lord, help us to submit to your time and to work in your preparation and trust that you will give us the victory. You will give fruitfulness in all of our lives. For your glory, through Christ we pray. Amen. Well, I hope you find that encouraging wherever you are frustrating with fruitfulness today. See you soon.